Lambright, head coach Keith Gilbertson for Cal. Two former coaches for Washington. A little bump and run coverage as Isaac Booth is, is playing. Now watch him drive the slant route. The ball is actually thrown behind Kralik, and it was not uncatchable. It was not a catchable ball, but Booth was still flagged for bumping into Kralik. That's why Washington has a first down at the 37-yard line. Matt Jones, a fullback with Coley and Kaufman, the tailback, and nothing right up the middle that time. Cal defense, which has struggled. Bill Ayer, 48, one of the players in on the tackle as we take a look at that defense for the University of California, which has struggled mightily last week. Greg and Upshaw is a true freshman. Greg Webb, a junior college transfer, getting his first start as they have made some changes. Jarrett Willard, leading tackler and an outstanding linebacker, and in the secondary, also some changes there. Dante DePaulo, who's a walk-on, a fourth stringer, has moved his way into the starting lineup. So second down and 10 for the Huskies. The option, Hoffman's got Driven out of bounds at the 39-yard line, and it was number one Paul Joyner, the junior from Altadena, the first man in on the stop. Joyner's got 22 tackles this year. One of the things you can see Washington doing right away is, is trying to establish the run up the middle with Matt Jones, the fullback, and Cal has been successful in defending that, so the obvious uh, uh, sequential thing you want to do after that is get the ball out in the perimeter with Kaufman. So California has to be uh, wary of the fact that if they play the run inside too strong, Washington's going to try and get outside with their speed in the backfield. Third down and eight. Number 39, Theron Hill is checked in at wide receiver. Heward, one look, intercepted. Intercepted. California with the pick. Number 28, Kevin Devine, a backup not even listed on the depth chart. Kevin Devine came up to make the pick as Keith Gilbertson told us they were going to make some changes on defense. <laughs> and they used changes the guys we hadn't even seen in practice or in previous games. But Kevin Devine is going to read the slant in pattern by Heward. Right there, you can see him cut underneath and read the pattern perfectly. That's what Washington tried to run on a previous play and got a pass interference call, and he's in right position. It gives California good field position. So this is not the turn of events that uh, Jim Lambright would have liked to have seen so far in this game. First and 10 from the 30-yard line. Dave Clark checking off at the line of scrimmage. Rutherford, the second man through, is going to get just a couple. One thing about the University of Washington, though, John, is when they've turned the ball over, they've been very reluctant to give up any points after that. Well, they have an outstanding defensive football team. It's uh, ranked uh, one of the best defenses in, uh, in the Pac-10 and in the country, seventh in total yards against them. So you're going to see where this, uh, this team is able to rally around another team and not take advantage or let the other team take advantage of the turnovers. But not allowed a touchdown after a turnover so far this year on second and nine. Bar. Got Caldwell. Boy, he was hit by three men right there at the 20-yard line. It's going to be short of the first down. Lamar Lyons, one of the first guys there to get him. Caldwell has uh, basically turned into Barr's favorite receiver. Last year it was Sean Dawkins. And Caldwell has been the guy with 22 receptions so far this year. He's a senior from Danville, California. Three touchdown receptions. And I tell you, between Simeon and Caldwell, they've got a couple of big play wide receivers. They have four big play wide receivers. They average over 19 yards a catch as a receiving group of four wide receivers. And we'll see all of them today as Cal really spreads the ball around offensively in their passing game. Third down and less than a yard. That was Bullard in motion. They'll give it to Rutherford, and that's going to be very close. He had to get across the 20. Jamal Fontaine from San Francisco was there to make the stop number 47. Fontaine's been a big time player, 27 tackles, 10 of those for losses so far this year. And that's going to be shy of the first down. They're going to set up fourth down. And that will bring up a field goal situation for Keith Gilbertson and the University of California. Doug Bryan, the senior, will come in. 45 of 56 in his career. This is a 37-yard attempt. He has not missed this year. He's 7-7. Seven of seven. And it's no good. So Brian has missed for the first time this year. 
Time out of the field, 9.03 left to go. First quarter, no score. The Bears and the Huskies, no score. First quarter as Hewitt goes back to pass and intercepted. Willard, 45, has got the pick. So on consecutive offensive plays by the University of Washington, Cal comes up with two interceptions. See, this was a defense last week that just didn't know which way they were going, John. But they have played so much better so far today. What amazes me is it's almost eerie. You get the feeling that Keith Gilbertson is inside of Jim Lambright's head as he's calling plays, the play action. Washington throws the ball very well. Willard makes a beautiful one-handed interception as he reads the play perfectly. And the coaches for Cal told us that Willard is a real student of the game. He's in the phone room all the time studying film. He led the Pac-10 last year in tackles. He's an outstanding football player. He just makes a heads-up play there. Washington has yet to yield a touchdown this year after turnover, as you mentioned. And uh, we'll see if they can hold here. First and 10, 25-yard line. Bars going to Caldwell. Touchdown! Caldwell matched up man-to-man -man on Reggie Reeser. And although Caldwell is not known for his speed, he's been able to get open and get open deep this year. behind him. Exactly. 25 yards on the touchdown pass. Reeser was the man he beat. Fourth touchdown reception for Mike Caldwell. And for Dave Barr, his 13th touchdown pass of the season. Caldwell spending a lot of time in the end zone uh, here lately, isn't he, with the two-point conversion last week to win it against Oregon. Well, Bryant to attempt the point after. And that's the first touchdown Washington allowed after a turnover this year. Ninth career touchdown reception for Mike Caldwell, the 103rd reception of his career. And I think Barr and Caldwell, there, there seems to be an attraction there because Barr seems so confident throwing to him. Oh, he does. Uh, last year, for some reasons, Caldwell's receptions uh, fell off. He only caught seven passes in the last eight games of the year. And what the Cal offense coordinators and coaching staff wanted to do was get him more involved in the passing game this year. And he really has been involved as he's turned out to be. Well, Doug, favorite receiver for Cal. Doug Bryant will kick it off to Bullion Kaufman and Pino Bryant are back and then you don't like to kick it to either of those guys so that what happens you get a lot of short squib kicks and that's the big man number 79 for the University of Washington and they call him Mercury because his name is Prince Arthur Emerson and he happens to be the middle man on that uh, kick return team and he's getting a chance to bring those kickoffs back this year. Well, I don't know if he has a future as a kick returner, but when you look at the, that shield, well, you, know he's size, having a good you don't time. know which way he's going. You know he's having a good time with it. All right, Washington was in man-to-man -man bump and run defense as Caldwell just streaks down the left sideline. And what Caldwell does so well is position, position his body for the reception. That's what he did on that play. Kaufman. Breaks two tackles outside. He's got a first down before Willard finally drags him down at the 47-yard line. So they got the ball to Napoleon Kaufman. Heward is 0 of 3, two interceptions. And he came into this game with some pretty good numbers. Had thrown just two interceptions so far this year as you're taking a look at one of the premier backs in the country in Napoleon Kaufman from Lompoc, California. Well, he could flat out fly. But getting back to Heward, you know, last week he only had two incompletions. He was 15 for 17. It was his best day as a starter. So he's got a rally right now, and so does the rest of his team. First and 10, 48-yard line. Play action. Penalty marker down. Heward's going deep. And some bumping and grinding down the field. Theron Hill, number three, was the intended receiver. Dante DePaula was back there on the coverage. And a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. Terry Glenn put on some good pressure that time onto uh, Damon Heward. You know, one of the knocks on Heward, John, has been that uh, he looks in one direction and he doesn't look anywhere else. That's right. He stays on his primary receiver, and that happens with young quarterbacks. I, I think what I like so far today is even though he's thrown two interceptions, Washington is willing to go back to the passing game. I mean, they're, they're not going to lean on the sophomore and say, okay, you've thrown two interceptions. We're going to sit on you now. We're just going to run the football. I mean, Washington has to take advantage of the fact that they have a strong running game, and they've averaged something like 300 yards in the last three contests on the ground against California the last three years. So certainly they can, set, they can set some things up with their running game with the play-action passing. Well, Damon Heward comes from a football family. 
Puyallup, Washington. His dad's a coach there. He's got uh, two younger brothers of both quarterbacks. They've got it first and five and another penalty marker down. And it looks as though Hewards, uh, John, might be playing a little bit of a game with the Cal defense with his cadence trying to get him to jump offside because he seemed rather ecstatic when they did on that particular play. Well, it's true. Not only that, uh, California outside. wants to Contact move some people around. Down. First down. And, and confuse Hewitt, and they want to change their fronts because they're, they're giving up 40 pounds average on the offensive line. Well, that's big Terry Glenn, number 93, the freshman, who's 6'5 and 330, and he's getting his first playing action of the year. And they said they want to use him because he is so big and because of that size differential of about 40 pounds. Now, he's 330, as you say. They want to try and get about 24 plays out of him today, but if he jumps off sides, we won't see him much more. You start to lean up a little bit when you're 330 <laughs> pounds, man. You're going to get off sides. First and 10, 42-yard line of Cal, and they'll go to Coffin up the middle. And he gets to the 40, Paul Joyner, the inside backer, and also there, James Stallworth, the outside linebacker on the tackle. Napoleon Kaufman, we talked about him, 5'9", 175, a junior, four rushing touchdowns this year, averaging nearly six yards a carry. Keep you updated on those uh, football and baseball scores. Well, today. you saw that baseball score. Joe Kralik yesterday was wearing a Phillies hat and yeah. has his hair sticking out of the back of it, and I thought he was he, John Cruck. Or, well, he said he was styling it before, before Cruck was. Yeah, so Cruck stole yeah. it from him. Okay. Second down and eight. Short drop by Hewitt. And the pass intended for Janoski. That time on the short drop, Heward, it looked like he ran into his uh, back, Matt Jones, who was coming up the block. Uh, Artis Houston was on the coverage over there. Artis Houston had very fine coverage. Number 19 is playing right corner today. There's a late bump and run defense there, and there's a couple of times they tried to go to Ben O'Brien as well in that position, and, and he defends that very well, too. So it looks like Cal wants to press those receivers. They must feel that they have to get off a bump and run. They can do a good job against them. That one was Artie Gigantino, who's the defensive coordinator. On third down and eight. Hewitt will roll near side. Going to the sideline for Ron Hill, the intended receiver, and he makes a terrific catch. What a catch there. Ike Booth was all over him, and Hewitt whistled it in. 15 yards on the pickup. And just the fourth reception by Theron Hill this year. Theron Hill didn't play last week. He was serving a one-game suspension that had something to do with a student loan that he had to pay back. He's back in a ball game today, and they need him now with Shelley out of the ball game for the rest of the year. And, and he just came back enough to the football to not allow Booth to come over the top and make the play. He wasn't really suspended. He just hadn't paid back the money until he paid it back and got all that squared away. Uh, he couldn't play. So You know how it goes if you owe somebody a little money. You're, you have a problem. <laughs> if you owe them a lot of money, they have the problem. That's right, exactly. Well, Heward, the uh, numbers are not impressive at the moment, but he's got his team down at the 26-yard line. He's just a sophomore. They play a little football in his family. Both of his brothers are starting quarterbacks. One in Payola High School, and the other one in junior high school. First and 10, 26-yard line. 7.40 to go. First quarter. Memorial Stadium in Berkeley. Kaufman spins. Kaufman down to the 21-yard line. That's the thing that makes Napoleon Kaufman such an outstanding running back is his ability to feel that pressure and immediately go away from it. And you saw that beautiful spin move to the inside. He's turning into one of the premier backs in the land. I mean, with Tyrone Wheatley and uh, those two guys, I think, are the two best running backs you see in college football today because they, they not only have the speed, but they have the power. He bench presses 340 pounds. He has the explosion, but he has the power to break tackles. Second and six. They go to Kaufman again. Willard nearly had him in the backfield, but busting in there. Number 91, Reagan Upshaw, the freshman from Pittsburgh, California, and Michael Davis. There's a look at uh, Upshaw. One of the things that's happening, John, in college football, more true freshmen are stepping into play. And, you know, they told us that they recruited this kid and told him he'd play a lot. They didn't think he was quite as good as he's turned out to be. Gilbertson said, hey, you come here, you'll play as a freshman. And that's what he's doing. He's lining up. I know they'd like him to bulk up a little bit. He only weighs 230 pounds. But he's a fabulous athlete. As we look at Washington Huskies inside the 20. 15 and 16. Third down and four. They're right at the 20. Hewitt's checking off at the line of scrimmage. The option to Kaufman, one tackle is missed, finally driven out at the 20-yard line. Artis Houston was the man that got him. Davis had the first look at him. Kaufman was able to get around him, so that's going to bring up a field goal situation for the University of Washington. 
You're right, Roger. Davis made the play, though, by forcing Kaufman wide and forcing the pitch wide, although Houston made the tackle. Artis Houston playing uh, today. His brother, Cornell, was killed in Somalia was several days ago, so this is a very, very difficult day for him. 26-yard field goal attempt by Travis Hansen. And the kick it. Oh, welcome back to Memorial Stadium in uh, Berkeley, California. The University of California has picked off two of Damon Heward's passes, and they got a touchdown pass from Barr to Caldwell. They lead 7-3 to three against the University of Washington. Along with John Spagnuolo, I'm Roger Twybell. The last time Cal beat Washington, November 6, 1976, Gerald Ford was still in the White House. <laughs> Jimmy Carter had just been elected four days prior to that. Mike White was the coach, and the ill-fated Joe Roth was the quarterback suffering from cancer at yes. that time. Nobody knew about it. And, uh, and the average score in those games over the last 12 years has been about 36 to 18, so they've outscored them a margin of 2 to 1. And the last three years, Washington has outrushed California by a significant margin, uh, about 838 to 320. And Washington... Maybe showing a little bit of the effects with uh, Damon Heward not having Jason Shelley, who had caught 17 passes coming into this game, not having his favorite receiver and getting picked off twice already. That's true. Uh, but he is also going to use Bean O'Brien a little bit more on offense. We saw them go to him early in the uh, first quarter. Jason Crabb to kick it off. Benjamin and Simeon back deep. And that's Niall Benjamin at the five. Tripped up. Good open field tackle on the special teams. Down for the University of Washington Huskies was Leif Johnson, number 34, a backup fullback. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. And for the 23rd year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. So John and I will pick the uh, top player. Uh, why don't you take Cal, I'll take Washington. Fair or, should, or, should we, or should we have a real meeting of the minds and, and negotiate? Let's not later. oversell ourselves okay. with this mind stuff, right. Roger. Okay, we'll, we'll just try to figure it out before the game's over. Okay? First and 10, 19-yard line. Rutherford, the ball carrier. And he'll get a couple to the 22. See Jamal Fontaine, 6'3", 250-pound senior from San Francisco. 27 tackles, 10 for loss, and he's got three sacks so far this year. Interesting thing about Fontaine, too. You know, he and DeMarco Farr, the fine defensive lineman for Washington, both are from the Bay Area, and they hopped in a car together, drove up to Seattle to go to school, and they, they had a little trouble getting up there, but they look back on that day as sort of the harbinger of things to come for them at Washington. Second down and seven. Rutherford again on the left side, and nothing going. 45, Hillary Butler. They call him Future Dog. And why? Because he's been a backup linebacker and really the linebacker of the future. And so many good backers at the University of Washington now as a fifth-year senior is finally getting his playing time, John. Both Springstead and Butler played behind James Clifford and Dave Hoffman. And between those two players who are All-American and All-Conference, they had nearly 600 tackles. So they call themselves the lame duck linebackers <laughs> this year. They're only going to play one year, and they'll be out. Third down and six from the 23-yard line. Four wide receivers, a weak snap that time, but Barr has plenty of time to throw, and he has got Niall Benjamin. Benjamin across the 35 to the 39-yard line, where Lewis Jones makes the tackle. 16 yards on the pickup, and for Benjamin, just his sixth pass reception of the season. A little nice read by Barr, and a very good read by the receiver, Benjamin, as well, as he broke inside. And it's kind of a delay route. You'll see him on the left side of the, your screen. Benjamin will flash inside and then break out to the flat. As you can see, number one, Lewis Jones go after him. But Benjamin set him up beautifully in man coverage. And Lewis Jones was anticipating his move across the middle. That's what coordinators try and do week to week, is take a pattern and then use something different off that pattern. First and 10, 39-yard line. Rutherford will pitch it back to Barr. Barr can't find his man. He's got plenty of room to run, and he gets to the stake, and he has got a first down. We'll keep you updated on uh, all the scores, highlights across the country. As uh, Barr, not known for his running ability, did a pretty good job there. I asked him yesterday if he had any set running plays. He says, no, he says, I, I know what I can do. He says, if I'm running, I'm usually in trouble. <laughs> That's true. But he knows when to run, as he did on that flea flicker two plays ago. Uh, the timing was a little bit wrong there, trying to get the ball to Damian Semyon. And as a smart quarterback would, now that uh, has he uh, an extra year of experience, he realized nothing was there. He didn't force it, and he got the yards he could. 4.24 to go. First quarter, bars right on the money. 4-4 four four with the touchdown pass. Second and 10. 
Play action fake. Barr looking deep to Caldwell behind the coverage. Got it! Inside the five, down to the two-yard line. And they say, what kind of speed does he have? Cal says he gets behind people. That's exactly right. And the little play action was just effective enough to get Lamar Lyons number 25. Watch off the play. I watch number 25, Lamar Lyons. He's the free safety. He backs up a little bit. And the play action is just enough to make him delay as Caldwell streaks down the field, is able to sneak behind him and catch the ball. Caldwell is creating some havoc in that secondary so far today with three receptions for 80 yards and a touchdown. 47 yards on that uh, play. This is the seventh play of the drive. First and goal from the two-yard line. Rutherford is nailed behind the line of scrimmage, and we called the name of Lewis Jones on more than one occasion today as he came busting in from that rover back position to make the tackle. Both Kilpatrick and Jones are strong players and what is really a rather young secondary, John, for the University of Washington. That's right. They only had one returning starter. He's been, he didn't start today. That was Josh Moore who didn't start last year. But Jones came off the edge there and as an offensive coordinator, you want to look at that and say, okay, they came off the edge. They might be susceptible to play action. Rutherford again trying the right side. Very close to the goal line. No signal from the official. So with the clock running down near the uh, three-minute mark in the first quarter, California with a 5-0 record, 2-0 in the Pac-10 with uh, victory against UCLA in their first game of the year. The player banged up on the field. University of Washington player is down right on the goal line. And that's uh, Kilpatrick, uh, number 35 for the University of Washington. They're fine. Roverback Dave Kilpatrick, a junior from Anchorage, Alaska, who, uh, along with Lewis Jones, they both have three interceptions apiece this year. He's a key man for them. And there's Jim Lambright, uh, the longtime defensive coordinator for Don James, has uh, made the transition, I think, uh, rather smoothly into the head coaching spot. Uh, he has. You know, uh, he toiled in anonymity there for 25 years, finally elevated to the defensive coordinator position some years ago but for 25 years he was at University of Washington and I think he would have liked to have stepped into the head coaching role a little bit differently than he did but at least there's continuity in their program and they gave him a long term contract and uh, he's doing a fine job because he's a hands on coach as we watch Kilpatrick limp off the field you know when you're a player out of Alaska it's hard to get people up there to recruit you. <laughs> no it's not most coaches like to go fishing so they go up to the fishing to the recruiting a little ice time. fishing. Third and goal from the one yard line. Uh, movement on the right side. Barr was going to call timeout. Boy, there was some real confusion. Brian Thury, number 73, looked to be the guy who uh, fell down to the knee. Start, which happened before the timeout was called against the offense. And that was before the timeout was called. That's the. Uh, fourth penalty on the University of California today and they've got nearly 30 yards of penalty so far and that uh, really hurts them so that brings up a third and goal the ball will be moved back to the six yard line there you see well they're going to the, there you see the movement on the right side 30 did jump off sides Barr was trying to get a timeout and he's running out of time and now California has to go out of their goal line offense and into a three or four wide receiver set as I saw it was okay to check into the game. The guy who caught the touchdown pass last week to get Cal in a position to go for a win against Oregon. They're in a four wide receiver set. Number five, Marty Holly, the lone back. As Benjamin comes in motion. Barr being chased by DeMarco Farr. Now he's just going to try to throw it out of the end zone, which he does. So, And uh, on the sideline, Dave Barr was hit. Man giving him the chase over there was DeMarco Farr and Jamal Fontaine. They just gave him a little tap just to let him know that uh, they were indeed there and given chase. Well, what Cal was trying to do is run a pick play. You saw the motion and you saw two receivers. They actually went to a three receiver side. Uh, but Washington was wise to it and ran a zone behind it. So there was no ability for the receivers to rub off and create a pick. And as a result of that, Farr made the right decision and just threw the football away. 23 yard field goal attempt by Doug Bryant. He missed his first try from 37, and this is a guy that tries to miss kicks in practice because he feels you only have so many good ones in you. It's called the limited miss theory. Yeah, the limited miss theory, and he nails that one from 23 yards out, and Cal has taken a 10-3 lead. 
over the University of Washington. As we look at Doug O'Brien, you know, the interesting thing about him is he's been able to rally some support around the area with corporations. And for every field goal he kicks, $1,200 gets donated to the big brothers, big sisters in the area. He's quite a guy, a 3-3 average, uh, a great point average in political economics and industrial societies. That's quite a mouthful for a major, isn't it? <laughs> but he was also on student council or part of the student senate and had to relinquish that position because he was so active. Well, Dave Barr, the quarterback, led him to that great victory last week against Oregon, and I asked him just how much fun that win was. I've ever had in my life the best experience I've felt. I mean, just because coming back, being down, I mean, even that's what life's about. I mean, you're down. Things aren't going right for you, and you keep fighting, and, and things work out. And that's like that whole game right there is just... Uh, just an amazing thrill, and when I was younger, you know, I'm from the Bay Area, and the big pl or the the play in the big game, and I remember hearing about that and being like, wow, I, I can't imagine being a part of something like that. And I felt like this is kind of, you know, I mean, it's second to the the play, but I mean, it was a great thrill. He said after that game last week, he might change his major to drama <laughs> because he does have a flair for the dramatic. But so, so that's a game that you will never forget. Deep kickoff there, Kaufman. And they decide, I guess they're kicking away from uh, Prince Arthur Emerson that time. I think uh, they decided to go to the deep guys and were a little fearful of trying to tackle that 270 pound uh, offensive tackle. Uh, welcome back here to Berkeley. Start of the second quarter, along with John Spagnola, I'm Roger Twibell. California leads Washington 10 to 3. They've got it second and 21 from the 39 yard line. Bar on the play action with the time down the middle. He's got his receiver. Awezike. Ihani Awezike, the sophomore from Eaglewood, California. On the coverage, Lions and Moore. Awezike is working on Josh Moore, and he's really stepped up and playing some outstanding football for Cal so far this year. He is the first guy. Name will go down in history as the one who caught the touchdown pass last week to get Cal in a position to go for two. You know, there were only 30,000 people here last week for that game. I guarantee a couple years from now, oh, yeah. 100,000 people no say question. They, were, they were here for the second greatest comeback of all time in college. No question. Two tight ends right now for Cal on third down and two. They'll give it to Rutherford, and he's going to be close. He had to get uh, inside the 40-yard line. Trevor Highfield, uh, number 79, was the... Uh, Man that stood him up, Highfield's a 6'4", 285-pound sophomore from Westland, Oregon, uh, who has filled some pretty big shoes as their outstanding defensive lineman Hoffman has uh, been out with the injury. He had a ruptured disc mm -hmm. operated on this week and will be out for the season. Well, there's Lindsey Chapman, number 21, uh, hurt an ankle against Oregon last week and uh, didn't practice all week, came out this morning, tried it, just wasn't there. So uh, he's such a big, big factor for them. Has rushed for 486 yards and six touchdowns. And look at Michigan State now, leading Michigan in the second quarter, 17 to nothing. Boy, what a boost that'd be Wouldn't for that be uh, program. And would put Wisconsin right in the driver's seat, huh? <laughs> and Ohio State in the Big Ten, yes. But Chapman, a real key factor in the Cal offense, not in there today as uh, the uh, measurement and the first down for the University of California, first and 10 from the 40. Barr has to get rid of it in a hurry. That's Holly. Marty Holly down to the 32-yard line. Andy Mason made the tackle, and Jamal Fontaine was the man giving Barr chase. We asked offensive coordinator Denny Schuler for the uh, Cal Golden Bears about his fullback, Marty Holly, and he was talking about his lineup combinations and everything else. He says, that's one guy we need to have in the lineup all the time. Well, he's caught more passes, John, than he's run with the football this year. That's his 13th at the reception of the year. He's only run with it eight times. He's a very good blocker. That's why. And, and a lot of uh, fullbacks don't really care to run the ball that much if they can block and catch the ball. Rutherford on a second and two needed to get inside the 30 for the first down. See what Cal's doing so far, I think that is effective is they're getting good yardage on first down. And that's one of the things that all offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators focus on, and that's their yards on first down because then they can dictate to the opposition what they want to do. 
One of the other keys, we mentioned Chapman being out, but a real key for Cal today is having their original starting offensive line back in, which they started the season with. They'd gone with five different lineups uh, so far this year. So they have got their original starters. Cal, a two of five on third down situations on a third down and one from the 31. And Rutherford hit behind the line, lost the ball momentarily. Rutherford lost the ball momentarily as he got inside the 30. DeMarco Farr busted through and got a piece of him. And depending upon where the spot is, if it's inside the 30, it should be a Cal first down. And it is. So Rutherford did a good job of maintaining balance that time and knowing where to go with the football. Watch DeMarco Farr and the, and the number 75 and the, and the penetration he makes upfield. He destroys the whole play. But Rutherford showing enough ability to get the football. I'll tell you what, when you saw his knee come down and you saw where the ball was, he didn't make the first down. Okay. Got Cedric a very White. generous spot right there. Cedric White was also busting through that time. So first and 10 for Cal from the 30-yard line. Barr looking deep. Guess who called well? Just overthrown. As Barr drags himself up because he had Hillary Butler all over him that time. Barr does a really nice job, John, of staying within the parameters of his offensive line, staying in the pocket and moving up in it. Well, you mentioned Hillary Butler. The only reason he'd be in is because there's a blitz, and that means single coverage. And Caldwell's able to get deep again as Josh Moore, number seven, is the only player for Washington who's able to get near Caldwell. But that ball was just off his fingertips. Almost another great play by those two men, Caldwell and Barr. The offensive line gave up 31 sacks last year. So far this year, they've given up just 10 sacks. The 12th play of this drive. Second down and 10 from the 30, and penalty markers go down. Backing up in a hurry, there was Brian Thury. Offense. And that would be the uh, second penalty directly attributed to the junior from Salinas, California. So I just gave the offensive line a little credit and doing a good job uh, keeping the uh, defense off their quarterback. After the first quarter, the stats look like this, and, and John, the time of possession really jumps out, among other things, for Cal. As does the uh, as 165 does the stats. yards yeah. of total offense. The stealth stats, we'll call them, as they came and went pretty quickly. And you can see where Cal has been dominant so far offensively in this football game. Nine penalties, 76 yards for Cal, on a second down and 15. And going deep, this time Owazuke is overthrown by, call, or excuse me, by Barr. So that's... Two passes now. Players have been open as, once again, we go back to the first quarter stats and time of possession. Time of possession, and right above that is turnovers. And if you're not going to have the football and turn it over, the other team will, and that's why there's such a huge difference in that time of possession and, and total yardage. So, Barr had Caldwell. He had Awazake. Both of them open. Both balls. And that brings up a third down and 15. 35-yard line. Cal three of six in third down situations. 12:02 to go first half. The low snap. Barr gets it back down the middle. Ooh! I want to tell you what, folks. Nile Benjamin took some kind of hit right there. Pass incomplete. Lamar Lyons, number 25, the junior from LA, had a clear shot at him, and he definitely was looking for the rib cage area. Absolutely. And as a receiver, you hate to see that ball hung out in the oh. middle of the field like that. But he was the only player who was open. Benjamin was open. Lamar Lyons had the speed to get over and make the play. 52-yard field goal attempt upcoming for Doug Bryant. His career long is 50. It's good. That is a career long field goal for Doug Bryant, the senior. 52 yards and California leads Washington 13 to 3. Well, the University of California offense. There are quarterback Dave Barr, his uh, receivers over there. Caldwell, the ways of K. Getting a, a bit of a rest right now with 7 1 to go. First half, Cal leads Washington 13 to 3. Napoleon Coffin, seven carries, 46 yards. Back in the game. And they'll give it to Coffin, but Reagan Upshaw is right there. What a terrific play by the freshman. 6'4 and 230 from Pittsburgh, California, coming into this game with 17 tackles and five and a half sacks. 
and whatever Hewitt did at the line of scrimmage checking off there was not the right idea. But it appeared that Upshaw didn't really react too much to what was a delay. It's supposed to be, I, I believe, a counter type play. And anytime you're taking time running the football with delay action and a defender can make the penetration that Upshaw did on that play, you're not going to have success running the football. And Upshaw is really stepping up and playing well today as a freshman. Well, he took the 285 pound Pete Pearson and just drove him back as Heward in trouble, is tackled from behind. Michael Davis, the senior from Berkeley, was able to chase him down from behind. And I'll, I'll tell you, if Davis doesn't make that shoestring tackle, Heward is still running the football right now. That was just a great effort by Michael Davis, just extending himself and clipping the feet of Heward. Heward shows good pocket sense here as, as he's able to elude number one there, Joyner, but now watch and see if you can get a feel for how wide open it is upfield for him, and Davis just able to flick his heels. Third down and 12, 5.41 to go, first half from the 19-yard line. Washington's one of four in third down situations, and the pressure on here. The pass to Kaufman, that's intercepted. That's intercepted. 91, Reagan Upshaw on the deflection, comes up with the interception. It looked like Eric Zummel was the guy that touched it in the secondary as they were trying to run a little naked screen out there to Napoleon Kaufman, and he never saw the football. Sure they were. The Huskies are trying to get the ball to Kaufman. They're trying to take advantage of the aggressive rush by Cal, but the ball is thrown too high in the air. As a result of that, Zumwalt's able to react to it and watch what looks like almost a volleyball play. Zumwalt pops the ball, it comes through, and uh, hey, this upshaw is quite an athlete. I mean, not too many defensive linemen can catch the ball like a tight end before the ball hits the ground like that. And Cal gets its best turnover of the day so far. The fourth turnover by the Washington offense. First and 10, 13 yard line. Third interception of Hewitt today by the Cal defense, who had six interceptions coming into the game. And finally, good move by Barr. Now, he was pushed there. Are they going to throw a flag? There was absolutely no reason for DeMarco Farr even to touch the quarterback there. Yeah, but coaches tell players, too, if you're going to get out of bounds, get out of bounds, too. Barr, I think, it was a little casual. It's, it's interesting. Uh, if you can see the pattern develop, all the receivers were on the left side of the field. And the reason he was sort of lollygagging there on the right side is he had nobody to throw to. Well, let's see where Barr gets out of bounds now. He's out of bounds right there, and Farr got him. Well, uh, no, a little extra. Yeah. No penalty. Well, see, there's the problem. I mean, if he can't stop and he goes head over heels over that. He's, he's already ready for the halftime talk. There That's you go. the players come exactly. out. Second and seven for the 10-yard line. Barr trying to throw it away, and a penalty marker is thrown. They're looking at number 47, Jamal Fontaine. Did he take a late shot at Barr? That's where the flag was thrown as they tried to go to Simeon in the corner of the end zone. I don't know whether John whether Barr was just trying to get rid of the football that time or he was actually trying to get it to Simeon who was well covered. Personal foul, defense, late hit on the passer, half the distance, first down. Well, Fontaine, six tackles already today. This could be payback time. On the face, yeah. Uh, I don't even know if he got the I, I think this might be a payback from the pay so. previous play, but the secondary for the uh, Huskies has played very well the last two plays. You know, so many times you see a turnover and you see an offense go for the knockout, but so far Washington has uh, been able to hold up in the secondary, but they're victimized by a uh, personal foul against Jamal Fontaine. California has twice as many total yards in this game as the University of Washington, and that's another first down via a penalty. So 12 on the year for the University of California. Those gifts just keep on coming. And it's first and goal from the five-yard line. Play action. Marty Holly, touchdown. Penalty marker down. And I'll tell you what, that time for the University of Washington, the official threw a flag right at Steve Springstead, number 49, after the play. He did, yep. Over in the area where Holly caught the touchdown pass. So Marty Holly with his second touchdown reception of the year and it's going to go against the University of Washington. Dead ball, personal foul, late hit, defense. We have the option of taking on the try or the kickoff. Play, both receivers were open on that play as Washington really bit on the play. Actually, watch 81. 
That's Sean Bullard and Holly. The both receivers are open right here. Quarterback has his choice. Now watch. Actually, it's number 46. Remington come back and make a block. And what happens is Springstead throws a flipper at him and gets caught. It's usually the second guy who makes a hit that's going to get called for the penalty. But Remington will come back here and throw a block. It's really unnecessary. And yeah. you can see the retaliation, and that'll get the flag every time. So the retaliation by Springstead, the elbow, and the point after now by Doug Bryan with 5.13 to go. And the kick is good. So the University of California leads Washington 20 to 3 and 17 points have come off turnovers against the University of Washington. So Artie Gigantino going to be real happy with his defense right now. Third down and 15, 352 to go. First half. And they'll give it to Kaufman on the draw. And I believe he was tripped up by one of his own offensive linemen. It looked like Andrew Peterson. The left guard was down on the ground and Kaufman tripped over. James Stowers, number 36, was able to finish him off. And this will be the first punt today for the University of Washington. And keep in mind, California has blocked a punt in three consecutive games. As Wardell, that's Matt Frisbee back to receive the punt. Wardell standing right on his goal line. They didn't come hard that time. A nice punt by Wardell. Lisby with a fair catch at the 43. Three oh five to go first half and it's been all California 41 yards on the Wardell punt but the uh, Bears with great field position. This is what Washington's done in the first half. Interception, interception, field goal, fumble, miss field goal, interception. That's not pretty. <laughs> that's not offense. <laughs> that's not. That's why you can't blame a whole lot of what's happened today on the Washington defense. Actually, you know, they're fortunate to be down 20 to 13 at this point. Well, John, you know, I talked to you about the motivational factor for Washington. They beat Stanford in the big first game of the year, sort of the revenge against Bill Walsh, and then they went to Ohio State for their nationally televised game against a Big Ten opponent as Rutherford tries the middle of the line. But it's got to be hard for Jim Lambright to keep getting these guys up on an emotional level, especially they're coming against a team like Cal today with a 5-0 record. And the fact is Cal can go to the Rose Bowl right. and Washington can't. Sure, and Washington, the players on Washington are used to achieving a level of success. Three Rose Bowls, a national championship. I mean, they've got to be flat uh, somewhat oh, this year. Know. I almost liken it to what happened at Penn State last year when they were locked into a block uh, buster bowl before they even started the season. Barr was hanging out to Rutherford. Rutherford inside the 45 to the 44-yard line. That's enough for the first down. And we talked to Washington head coach Jim Lambright about his relationship with Cal head coach Keith Gilbertson. A uh, big carryover from uh, both of us being Don James's coordinators. Uh, uh, we were very, very close friends. Uh, have been, uh, families have been friends uh, for a long, long time. And uh, I have the greatest uh, admiration in the world for Keith as, a, as an offensive mind. Uh, he and I have played uh, three years worth of games with uh, my defense, your offense. If I do this, what will you do? So the talk with Jim Lambright about uh, Keith Gilbertson, all the time they've spent together, and Dead ball. a little bit uh, of a mind game today between these. Uh, what they say? They went through a lot of cocktail napkins. If I did this, what would yeah, you what do? Would if you, you do? did this, what would I how do? How would you stop my defense? Uh, how would you stop my offense? I wonder how much of that they filed away in their memory banks to, to break out and use today. There goes Donovan Schmidt off the football field. Yeah, he uh, hurt that left ankle uh, earlier in the game. So he's been taken off on the first down at 15 after another penalty against Cal and uh, Rutherford with a gain of about four on a second down and 15. Less than two minutes to go first half in California. The underdog in this game, Washington about a three-point favorite coming in. California leading Washington 20-3 to as uh, we check out some other scores for you. Across the country, and of course, we'll keep you updated on uh, what's going on in the uh, Pac-10 today. So second down and 12. Cal with all three timeouts remaining. And another penalty. Yeah, that I, was, I think they're in double figures now. That was Brian Thury on the on the left side. He's the strong tackle, and, and he was called this time again for picking up his hand and moving back. 
Dead ball, false start on the offense. That shouldn't be happening. I mean, not at this point of the season. 30 started a lot of the games this year. He's experienced. And uh, yeah, California can get in a situation here before the half. If they could put more points on, they could go a long way toward putting this game away. That's Todd Stucey, 75, 6'6", six, six, and 305-pound uh, senior from Agoura, California, who is one outstanding offensive lineman. Can squat press 610 pounds, <laughs> can bench press 500 pounds. Oh, boy. And he plays weak tackle. That's yeah, not exactly the name you should give that position. Second and 17 for Barr as he finds his receiver, Niall Benjamin, across midfield. And uh, Barr wants to hurry things up here. Andy Mason was the man that made the tackle for Washington. You know, also, to keep his weight up to 305 pounds, he eats six or seven meals a day. I mean, wouldn't you love to do that? And they throw down those uh, milkshakes and everything else they can get their hands on to, to get the calories and the proteins into their system. But all these offensive linemen for Cal went on a vigorous off-season weight training program, and each one put on an average of about 15 to 30 pounds. Timeout called by the University of Washington. That's the first they've used this half. Stussy, I mean, his lower body strength is incredible. Look at those legs here, John. And he has quick feet. I mean, they were going through some pass uh, blocking drills the other day. We were able to watch them practice on Thursday. And I was amazed at the quickness of his feet. I mean, he was the quickest of all the offensive tackles. And that, that's at over 300 pounds. So, so he has some definite potential. And he plays that position called weak tackle. And all that really means is that he usually doesn't have a tight end lining up next to him. So he's the kind of guy that's going to get exposed to those hard outside rushers and everything else. And, and as a result of that, he does have quick feet and he can pass block very well. And that's going to help him in his professional career. And he's graded out at better than 94% uh, for the uh, games played so far this year. So he hasn't made many mistakes. Let's uh, check out the uh, AP uh, top 20 right now. The uh, teams that are idle today, Alabama, they'll next play Tennessee, Penn State, uh, big game coming up against Michigan, Arizona idle. They'll take on Stanford next week. Virginia and Florida State, that'll be a good game in the ACC and then Syracuse and Pittsburgh. So a lot of and top Cal, 25 teams. If Cal does win today, today, Arizona will come in here to play them, and they're the two toughest Pac-10 games that Cal will have this season. It's in November. And it's third down and 12. Barr's got the middle wide open now. Well, you know, he tried to be brave that time, and uh, he got hit not once but twice. I mean, what... Keith Gilbertson wants him to do in that situation is just find a piece of that artificial turf and lay down gently and don't try to be a hero with a 17 point lead and 34 seconds to go in the first half. Well, Washington just called timeout. I, I think he was you know, obviously trying to go for the first down marker. And by, by running laterally like that, he hurt his chances. But I don't know many quarterbacks other than Charlie Ward that can get to the sideline and beat you know, good <laughs> defensive players. It's easy to stand up here. I mean, he had a better chance of just running straight ahead to try and get through the defenders rather than run laterally like he did. But I'm wondering now if Cal doesn't just go for it. I mean, do they have enough confidence in the way their defense has played so far to try and get the next five well, yards? Yeah, fourth down and six. Or do they actually uh, just punt the football and say and play percentage football? You know, Gilbertson has an offensive background. They think a little differently by going for two points, things like that. But a guy like Lambright, who has a defensive background, and he'll go by the book that's written did by the defensive Did you find that in guys. your career as a uh, former offensive player? Did you find that the offensive coaches do, uh, who become head coaches, do think differently than sure. defensive coaches? Sure, absolutely. I mean, there's a book, but there's two books that are that are written. There's the uh, Washington uh, staff, the uh, offensive uh, brain trust, as you will, for the uh, Huskies. That's Jeff Woodruff uh, That's with right. the glasses on there, the uh, son-in-law of Don James, yeah, former he, coach. He says well, his father-in-law calls him once in a while, looks at some films, mm -hmm. and chews him out, and says, what, <laughs> what are you doing during the game? Then? Well, Cal has decided to punt it. Brian, Long, uh, uh, Brian calling a fair catch inside the 10, so with 28 seconds left to go. Uh, maybe the uh, smart thing to do right there by the offensive coach. You know, they always say about Gilbertson, you know, he, he takes things to the edge and then he works inside of that. He knows exactly where the edge is and he doesn't go over the edge, but he's right there at the edge most of the time and then he sort of shrinks in from the edge. Well, I second his judgment there. I, I, I don't think uh, he, he would have given Washington a chance to move the football and maybe get some points on the board and, and now they have to go quite a long ways in order to score. And, and again, if Washington wants to try something, they risk turning the ball over deep in their territory. Washington with just one timeout remaining. They pitch it back to Kaufman. And maybe a little cat and mouse here. Cal starts calling timeout with three to go, huh? <laughs> it could be, but not. We'll let the clock run now. 
So California, the underdog in this game, leads Washington 20 to 3 as we reach halftime at Memorial Stadium in Berkeley, California. 20 to 3. Now Barr gets a couple of touchdown passes uh, in the first half. Last week he had three touchdowns in that comeback win against Oregon. And uh, that's the uh, third time in five games this year that he's thrown at least three touchdown passes. And in 11 games last year, he had four occasions to three or more. As Brian will kick it off, and he squibs it down there. They don't want Kaufman, and that's the big man for the University of Washington, Prince Arthur Emerson. Who knows? He might make it as a return specialist yeah, in the I think NFL. He got huh? a little air there. Emerson actually got off the ground and <laughs> tried to hurdle somebody. But you know what? They they kick in the end zone and Washington gets the ball in the 20. And here Emerson takes the ball out and they have good field position. Well, statistics at halftime shape up this way. Well, look, just right down to the bottom. Four turnovers, three of which led to the uh, 17 points for Cal. And that's the difference in the ball game so far today. But Washington has an opportunity right here to get back in with opening drive in the second half. And they hand it to the first back through. That's Matt Jones, the senior from Portland, Oregon. And Jones uh, able to get a couple against a revived California defense. Eric Zemmel, number 23, the senior from Moreno Valley, with 28 tackles, so two interceptions, and two uh, fumble recoveries. We've got a Cal man down. A University of California player down at about the 38-yard line. Well, you have to believe that the Cal defense is building confidence as this game moves on. Uh, Artie Gigantino realizing that he, if he can stop the rushing attack, which he was so worried about uh, coming into today's ball game for Washington, then this team is just going to get more and more confident as the game moves on. That's Eric Zumholt who uh, had the injury. So... Uh, we're just underway second half. We've got an injury on the field. We'll return to Berkeley right after this. Well, that's a knee of Eric Zumwalt being checked out by the uh, Cal training staff. And he's an obvious pain there as we've got second and six. And Kaufman tries the left side. Napoleon Kaufman to the 43-yard line where Bill Ayer, senior from Antioch, California, 6'4", 250 pounder, came up to make the tackle. John, what do you think uh, Washington's going to try to do in the second half uh, to get their offense going? Well, I don't think, I think they have to go back to their basic game plan. That's to say, hey, we're bigger than this defensive team for Cal, and we can run the football, and we have to run it successfully. I mean, let's get down to our basics and what we do the best, and that'll protect Damon Ward a little bit as the quarterback. But here's the key third down situation. They have to keep drives alive. Washington just one of six on third downs. They give it to the first back through. And battling for yardage was Matt Jones. Michael Davis, number 32, was there on the tackle. And from here, it appears to be short of the first down. I'll tell you, the uh, University of Washington, I think, really missing the services of uh, Jason Shelley, who's been suspended for the year, who had 17 receptions coming into this game. Saw the picture of Michael Davis there. He's got six tackles so far today, and uh, this is going to be close enough for a measurement. But without Shelley there, they really take away the deep threat, and Shelley was a guy who could really open up defenses for the University right. of Washington. And Shelley was their big play receiver as that extra second effort by Matt Jones gets a first down. Well, they did get the first down, and uh, let's go back to that injury to Zumwalt. We'll see number 23 on the left side of your screen. See how somebody rolls on his right knee there. Boy, that's, the, that's very Garcia. painful that everybody falls on top of it. But 65, Frank Garcia fell on the knee. And boy, it's hurt. You can't pull your ankle out like you can on a grass surface. And as a result of that, they're checking his knee out on the sideline. I, I'm sure he twisted his question of how severely he hurt it. Cured. Pass finally finds his tight end, Mark Bruner, number 85, the junior from Aberdeen. And, uh, John, it's the first time they've gone to him today. That's right. Eric Conwell, the other tight end, caught a pass and fumbled the ball when he was hit, but this is Bruner's first catch, and he, they feel is one of the best tight ends on the, on the west side of the country. Well, the last time the University of Washington uh, was losing to Cal at halftime, November 20, uh, November 12, 1988, uh, that was at Husky Stadium. 24-3, uh, and Washington came from behind to win that game, 28-27. On a second down and seven, here will come to the near side to Janoski. And Janoski is hauled down by Paul Joyner. I'll tell you, Joyner has had an outstanding day. 
the junior from Altadena California was all over Janoski making just his fourth reception of the year. Joiner, very active linebacker, can run very well. Janoski comes back, is trying to set up a quick screen, and if you'll notice, it's hard for a receiver to do this, but he should have waited for his offensive lineman and cut off of their blocks. But he's a little bit too quick with that move upfield, and that's why Joiner made the tackle. A third and five, you were down the middle. Bruner's got it. Bruner inside the 25 to the 24 yard line. DePaula and Houston finally bring down the big tight end who is shaken up. I tell you, he got rocked. I mean, he was concentrating on DePaula, the safety, and never saw Houston come from the left side and hit him right in the rib cage. And, and you know, as a tight end, he's a tall target. He's 6'5, 240. And uh, just let's watch because sometimes you get isolated as a receiver in the open field. You see Bruno on the left side. I thought he might have been route. interfered with a little bit. He might have been, but, but watch the run now. He's looking to the right side. And he doesn't see Houston come at all, and that's a nice rip shot there as he lands on his shoulder, too. So he got pretty banged up on that play. He'll take a rest on the sidelines and, and get his wits. Well, he averages 18 yards per catch, and uh, he will be sorely missed if he's not back in there. First and 10 from the 23-yard line. As he runs the option, Kaufman trying to cut it up inside, and once again, it was Paul Joyner. Well, I'll tell you what, he has played some kind of football game today. This is obviously an inspired California defense as Coach Gilbertson told us they were looking at last week as a loss and that's the way they approach practice this week. Watch number 99, Brad Bowers. This guy's 6'7". Look how he plays the option. I mean, Muir did not make a decisive decision there and as a result of that, everybody else could get into the play defensively. But, I mean, when you have Brad Bowers starting and he's starting today, in place of Dwayne Clements. He's a big guy at 6'7", and he can cause problems with that option. Second and 13, here on the wall. Ball stripped away. Jared Willard stripped it away and picked it up in another turnover by the Washington Huskies, and the Cal defense comes up big again. I'll tell you why that hurts. is because D.J. McCarthy, number 81, the wide receiver for Washington, was wide open down the middle of the field. <clears throat> Hewitt rolls out, Joyner's knocked down, he's able to get into the perimeter, but from the inside out for pursuit from Willard, it's just fabulous. And I mean, what a heads up play to be able to knock the ball out of the quarterback and recover it like that as Washington has now turned the ball over five times today. Willard came into the game with 50 tackles, led the Pac-10 in tackles a year ago, and this Cal defense once again comes up strong at the start of the second yeah. half and Barr is going to run will he fall yes but not <laughs> soon enough you I think can, he still has to work on that you can no he, he doesn't you know he was a baseball player too in high school matter of fact uh, Mike Caldwell uh, and uh, Barr were uh, many times uh, across from one another uh, in high school playing baseball against uh, each other that's where they first got to know each other Park said, you know, I was playing first base and they called those on first and says, gee, he says, you know, you're a year ahead of me and I hear you're going to Cal. That's neat. I'd love to go to Cal someday. And Caldo just kind of looked at him and said, yeah, right, kid. <laughs> you know, don't worry about it. Second and five, 37 yard line. Barr, well, oh, he's got a wide open seam. Now he's going to tumble on the shoulder. So he's tried it three different ways. He's tried the slide. He's tried the uh, head first ball. He's tried to get to the sidelines. You know, you see David Barr right now making smart decisions, and uh, David York's part of the offense for Washington has turned the ball over now five times. I think really Heward is where Barr was last year in terms of his progression. Heward's just a sophomore. He's going to make some mistakes. Barr made a lot of mistakes last year as a sophomore. And that one year of seasoning and experience goes a long way. You can see Barr making a lot of good decisions right now, taking the ball down, tucking the ball, and running. Heward will be where Barr is next year. Holly. Marty Holly inside the 35 to the 34 yard line. He doesn't carry the ball off. And 16 yards on that pickup. He came into this game only eight carries for 26 yards as the senior from San Fernando rips off the run. So it's been Barr and Holly carrying the football. See a great hole opened up on the inside. An inside trap play, number 70, Todd Blackwell coming across, helps open up the seam, and that's what you want the fullback to do, just burst right up the middle and get upfield. Good blocking, good execution by Cal. Good block by Malman there, as on uh, first and 10, Barr with a lot of time, he finds Holly, and he gets a block from Caldwell. 
I won't say that was a good block. I'll say Caldwell got in the sure. way and allowed Holly to get inside the 20-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup, so Holly with 16 and 17 yards on successive plays and another California first down. And that whole play was set up by the pocket presence of Dave Barr. Being able to look downfield, knowing where his layoff receivers were, getting the ball to Holly and letting a running back run with the football. And Caldwell, as you said, just got in the way enough for Holly to get additional yards. Holly, three carries, 30 yards today. First and 10, 18 yard line. They'll give it to Bernard Rutherford. And right now, John, Cal is winning the battle up front. They are, and, and they're doing it. Remember when we talked to the offensive coordinator, Denny Schuler, today, he said, we're going to quick count and man block, and then actually in zone block, and then we're going to go into our cadence and, and man block. But here's where they're just zone blocking, coming off the football on a quick block. You can see Stuzzi pin his man inside, number 75, and Holly is down the football for it. Second That's down. Rutherford is, number 34. Second down and two from the 10-yard line. They'll give it to Rutherford again, but he is nailed in the backfield. DeMarco Farn, we've not called his name many times today, but the senior from San Pablo, California, was the guy that busted through to make the stop. That's right, DeMarco Farn has really come into his own as a football player this year. He's the kind of guy that just had motivational problems for a number of years, but uh, he and his uh, defensive line coach, Randy Hart, has clashed a little bit over the years, and uh, there was a story once where Hart said, you have to do 17 gassers, and DeMarco Farr thought he had a whole week to do them, but he had to do them that day. <laughs> Gassers at Washington are to run five yards and do a push-up. You do 17 of those for uh, 100 yards each. Uh, that'll get you a little bit winded. Well, Cal wants a timeout. Uh, the word on Zumwalt is that he has a sprained ligament in his right knee and will not return. So at 8.03, left to go, third quarter. Cal's driving, and they lead Washington 20-3. John Spagnola with you. Memorial Stadium in Berkeley, California, 35. The Cal Bears. Quick handoff to Holly, and DeMarco Farr was all over it. They knew what was coming that time. He did. He, I thought he almost jumped off sides, too, but he stayed in long enough. But what penetration he got upfield. Well, this Marco Washington Farr has really turned it up here in the third quarter. This Washington defense, John, fourth in the nation in rushing defense, only giving up 75 yards a game. And I'll tell you what, Cal is really running well. 32-yard field goal attempt by Doug Bryan. And he's good. Off the turnover again. More points for the University of California. Lost first sack of the day uh, from a team Washington that came into this game with 17 sacks, John. So the offensive line of Cal's really, you know, done the job so far. They have done the job. They've been able to mix things up offensively, but uh, the final in the National League. Oh, you're Phillies. Goes up two to one over the Phillies. Phillies huh? That's too bad there, fellas. It's going to be hard to fly back to Philadelphia to a crying city. <laughs> Somehow you manage, I'm sure. Whether it's at midnight tonight or early tomorrow morning, whenever. Third down and 20. 438 to go, third quarter. Down third down conversions, three out of 10. Barr moves up. Downfield and nearly picked off. Josh Moore, number seven, got a piece of it. Moore got a piece of it. The intended receiver was Damian Semien. And maybe the Washington defense getting a little bit of the feel of things, uh, getting Barr under control, and maybe their defense will be the impetus for their offense. It has to happen that way. I'm sure they would have liked to have gotten a turnover there. But Cal's offense sputters, and Washington's going to get the football in pretty good field position. But they have to do something offensively at this point. Ryan Longwell inside his five-yard line, his fourth punt today. Angles it to the near side. Beano Bryant to the 39. The reverse to Kaufman. The seam up the middle, and he has got room. A penalty marker. Kaufman will go all the way. Touchdown. The penalty markers all over the field. I think they got number 13, Andy Mason, on a clip. 44 yards on the punt, 61 on the return. Andy Mason in midfield standing. Illegal block in the back. Field. Against the receiving team. That's against the penalty will be 10 yards from the Man, spot. What a great call that first wow. really was. 
There's Mason. Uh, he was in a pile up, and uh, they set up what we call a picket fence in football when you can get a reverse and you can change the angle where a, a runner is running. They set up some some blockers for him, but Andy Mason, I think, got a shove in the back, or at least that's what's called, and he can't believe it, and Washington would have gotten right back in this football game. Well, John, you're right, because uh, the offense has done nothing so far today, and you could have tried to create something, as we just mentioned, that's right. your defense, your special teams, and uh, there was the big play, which is called back. Okay, watch number 13 as he cuts across. Kaufman has the football. Oh, my. That, 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 that's the call. That is a uh, that is not a very good call for hitting somebody or pushing the back. Buren is still the quarterback. First and 10, 37 yard line. And Conwell, the tight end, makes the catch and he's dragged down at midfield. Dante DePaula is the man on the tackle as Conwell with the catch 13 yards. And you think of the two plays, Conwell. Fumbling the football down inside the 10 earlier in the game and this touchdown being called back. Those are two big plays that have gone now against Washington. And those kind of plays are the plays that determine the outcomes of football games. First and 10. Bino Bryant to the 45-yard line. Second and five from the 45. Hewitt checking off the line of scrimmage. Both receivers split to the far side of the field. And they'll give it to Bino Bryant. Cuts it back against the grain. Bryant inside the 35, dragged out at the 32-yard line by Artist Houston. Good block there by Tom Gallagher. Number 66, the tackle. And Napoleon Kaufman not in there at the moment. They're getting it done by using Bino Bryant, and there's Gallagher, a six foot five, 300 pound senior. But yeah, he sense a certain surge, a sense I of do. urgency now yeah. in the offense for Washington all of a sudden. Whether or not the touchdown on the reverse on the punt routine helped them or not, they certainly have got an element of excitement that I haven't seen so far in their play today. Less than three minutes to go, and once again, jumping off sides, number 93, Terry Glenn, the young man, the freshman from Hayward, California, who was a little anxious in the first half, has jumped offside again. Now, what is your law of physics that you picked up here when you're 330 pounds and, and you you're move leaning, forward? And you're leaning, the chances of you falling over are much greater than regaining your balance. Uh, I'd like to see that formula written out on paper. But I, <laughs> I can find somebody here at Cal that can do it, I'm sure. This is the place to find it. Well, that uh, penalty before the snap, and. Uh, the University of California now 13 penalties, 96 yards. And here's your law of physics. This is my 330 pound. There, can, did he get? No, he <laughs> could look at it. See, then he falls over. Right? Am I right? Yes, you are. That is. I, I think I think you might get I'm it. I'm not right off it, but I, you'll be a professor emeritus here pretty soon. Right? First and five, 27 yard line. Caught. Willard hits him inside the 25 at the 23 yard line. Jared Willard, maybe one of the most underrated players in the country, the leading tackler in the Pac-10 last year, had 50 tackles coming into this game. He is a guy that the coaches just look at and say, boy, this is a leader. If you want a guy in the middle of your defense to call the signals as he's looking over for signals right now, he's a guy that uh, had 19 tackles versus Washington last year. Ten of those were unassisted, and he knows and recognizes formations and play tendencies he's always studying and he looks like an outstanding game today yeah. I mean, you know, if you say what, what does a linebacker look like a little he looks hunched like over yeah, yeah the whole thing second and one Hewitt wants to throw it forced out of the pocket and he's got all kind of room Hewitt at the four yard line runs out of bounds and a good job by Damon Hewitt DePaula was the man there to finally move him out but to, when the rush closed in on him, he took it outside 19 yards on the pickup for the sophomore from Buyala. Real good decision by Damon Hewitt. The pocket collapses on the right side. See, that's Joyner coming in. He jumps up in the air, but when he does that, he loses contain. And as a result of that, Hewitt is able to get outside and get a lot of yards down the sideline. I didn't even see Hewitt looking in Joyner's direction. I'm not so sure that jumping up on top of the, the blocker was the best thing for Joyner to do. And the University of California has taken a timeout as 203 remain, third quarter, and Damon Heward, the uh, sophomore quarterback, filling the awfully big shoes of uh, 
of two guys that uh, went into the NFL from a year ago, Mark Brunel and Billy Joe Hobart. And uh, before this game, he had fared very well through his first uh, four games, having thrown seven uh, touchdowns, just a couple of interceptions. And he uh, comes from a football family, as you mentioned. His dad's the coach, Puyallup. Uh, he does. You know, he's a guy that has a uh, locker room right in the uh, den of his house. Uh, he and his brothers used to play football just about every day of the week. His father's a high school coach. But, uh, you know, they go out of the way to say it's not the Todd Marinovich approach to uh, coaching a young man and, and leading him to become a uh, college football coach. Quarterback. There's Hewitt, who I think has, has done very well in the second half so far. You look at the comparisons between the two quarterbacks today, Dave Barr and Damon Hewitt from University of Washington. Hewitt 8 for 14, 106 yards, but the three interceptions have hurt him and his team so far today. Sixth play of this drive, first and goal, four yard line. Johnson in motion to the near side. Hoffman, touchdown, Washington. And remember 88. Well, these players are pretty happy about getting the ball in the end zone. And you, now with the extra point, University of Washington will be down by 13. So two more touchdowns, and they can take the lead here, 24-23. I'm sure that's what they're thinking right now. It's very important to forget points on the board right before the third quarter ends. Fifth rushing touchdown for Napoleon Kaufman this year. <laughs> As Travis Hansen to attempt the point after. Made all 11 he's attempted so far this year and make it 12. So with two minutes left to go, third quarter, California leads Washington 23 to 10. Now welcome back here to Memorial Stadium in Berkeley, California, along with John Spagnuolo and Roger Twaddle. Hope you've enjoyed this one. 23 10. Cal is certainly enjoying it at the moment. 347 left to go. Washington with all three timeouts and movement on the right hand side of the line. And it appeared as though the offensive line for Washington got up and out of position. Andrew Peterson, number 60, was one of the guys moving. I, are you a little surprised that maybe uh, Jim Lambright, John, hasn't gone to Eric Bjornsson as his backup quarterback? Because obviously, I mean, Hewitt's just having a difficult time. I don't know if it's all. Hewitt's fault. I mean, no, certainly a, a quarterback change is something you want to try. But I mean, up until now, Washington has been in the football game. They had a good drive there at the beginning of the second half, too, when they started to get back into the football game. So I'm not sure if pulling in and putting Bjornsson in would have been the answer. First down and 15. That was the 23rd penalty of the game as Hewitt has got his tight end, Bruner. And Bruner wisely gets out of bounds as they'll try to work the sidelines here. Artis Houston, number 19, the junior from Compton on the tackle, 10 yards on the pickup right there. Well, if this drive consumes any time at all, all Washington hook for is a touchdown, an onside kick, and then an opportunity to try and get the football in the end zone again. Cal has won 13 of their last 14 home games that won Washington. Second and five. to the near side, catch is made. D.J. McCarthy, number 81, with his first reception of the day. Ike Booth over there on the coverage as the clock continues to run. Ike Booth doing a good job keeping McCarthy in balance and the clock keeps going. Third down and four. Hewitt calling off signals down the line of scrimmage. Pressure down. James Stallworth. Boy, he has been a force for the Cal defense coming in from his outside linebacking spot and causing Heward all kinds of problems. Starworth was the player who made such a good play on that one screen to Kaufman earlier in the game. Here he's just coming on a dog, a linebacker dog, and he stops Washington's ability to be able to throw the football downfield. A nice sack on Damon Heward. Watch number 36 he gets off the football very quickly and he's able to beat the tackle number 71 Pete Pearson I mean right out of his stance and when a that's the advantage of the home crowd making noise Washington calls timeout now and they'll try and regroup here but you can see where the tackle was really in a, in a difficult situation because Stallworth had just beat him out of his stance and at that point all the tackle could hope to do is, is try and push the player in the back but Stallworth made the sack. So we have fourth down, nine yards to go. Jim Lombright calls timeout. And it looks like they have to go for it at this point. 
Fourth down and nine. Fans on their feet here. And I would have to say this is it. If Washington has any hope of getting in this game and winning. That's second. It. Ford got his receiver. That's Deron Hill. And that's enough for the first down. He found a gap over on the far side between the 35 and 40. And that's a first down for Washington. The Huskies with two timeouts remaining and 257. Only well, other uh, Pac-10 game taking place at the moment. Washington State leading Arizona State 23 to 7. And I'll tell you, the Sun Devils got knocked off by Oregon State last week. And uh, Mike Pattinson, a couple of touchdown passes. The uh, brain trust of the Washington coaching staff. Jeff Woodruff up there, the offensive coordinator. That's well, a clock is stopped. They're getting things squared away. I think they're going to make an adjustment on the clock. The uh, Bears will be at Washington State next week and then USC the following week. California does not play Oregon State this year. First and 10, 36 yard line. Fjord in trouble. Gonna run with it. Gets one block and is able to get out of bounds at the 43 yard line. Artis Houston, the man to uh, see that he gets out of bounds, and that stops the clock with 2.41 remaining. Well, folks, if you've ever had emotional upheaval in your life, the loss of a loved one, someone very close, you can imagine what it's been like the last few days for Artis Houston. He flew down to Los Angeles to be with his family, came back here Friday morning, playing this football game today. His brother killed in Somalia several days ago. Came up with a big interception in the last Washington series. He's played outstanding football. Second and four from the 42. Fewer downfield pass overthrown. Dave Janoski, the intended receiver, and that was Artis Houston on the coverage, and that is Damon Hewer, the man being helped up. It's kind of situation that you don't want anybody to be in as Michigan State holds on and upsets Michigan. So a big win for George Burles and his program right. as Michigan State goes to three and one it with the only loss for Michigan State being against Notre Dame this year. And it makes uh, Penn State, Ohio State, and Wisconsin looking pretty good right now. Sure does. Yeah. People start to think about roses. It takes a little luster off that Penn State-Michigan match. Right there. <laughs> Third down and four. Reward to Theron Hill down at the 40-yard line. 18 yards on the pickup. Moore made the tackle as Washington slowly but surely moving their way down. 229 left to go. And remember, 13 points is the differential, so they don't need to go for a two point conversion if they do score. Stewart's got his tight end, Bruner. And look at the junior. Find out where the first down marker is. Get just past it and out of bounds. Another first down. All the counts defensive Huskies. attention was focused on Theron Hill down the sidelines as they doubled him up. And that left Bruner wide open on the sideline as he wisely finds the uh, yardage marker and gets out of bounds. But I like this drive and I like what DeMond Howard has been able, or Hewitt has been able to do so far today as a quarterback. I mean, this drive so far, he's been under ex intense pressure as he's for. Uh, as Bruner has four catches for 49 yards, but he's doing a fabulous job running this two-minute drill so far. First and 10, 29-yard line. Hewer trying to go to the corner. Catch made! Touchdown! DJ McCarthy, and I'll tell you, the officials sort of looked at each other for a moment and finally signaled touchdown. 29 yards from Hewer to McCarthy, the senior, from Boca Raton, Florida. McCarthy makes a fabulous adjust adjustment to the football in order to catch it. Coming down the left sideline and breaks back inside. When the ball was thrown, I thought Cal had perfect coverage on it. Artis Houston, number 19 in coverage. Now watch, now watch number 81, McCarthy break. He comes back inside. It just makes a perfect adjustment on the football. 
That was 28, Kevin Devine back there as the point after is good. That's right, Houston broke with the other receiver inside. McCarthy was able to take Devine down the sideline. De Devine's a young player that really hasn't played that much this year, so 2.06 to go, and Cal leads by six. Welcome back, 2.06 left to go. California leads Washington 23-17 after the touchdown pass by Heward to DJ McCarthy. Heward was 6-7 on that drive. 80-yard touchdown drive as Jason Crabb now at the onside's kick. Loose, it's loose. Washington got it. Washington got it. Washington got it at the 48-yard line. Scott Taylor jumped on the football and with 2.02 to go, Washington has got the football. Scott Greenlaw, Greenlaw cornerback, was able to take advantage of the bouncing ball, jump on it. You saw in college football the new rule where at least four players on the kickoff team have to be on one side of the field. But Washington was still able to execute the onside kick and they got the bounce they needed from that kick. Six. First and 10, 48-yard line, 2.02 to go. The Huskies with two timeouts left. Hewer going back to the air to his tight end, Bruner. And he's knocked out of bounds, and that only used four seconds off the clock. John, how aggressive can you be defensively right now? Right now, Cal has got to play some sort of aggressive defense. I mean, they've been successful today with a pass rush against Heward. And in this situation, I don't think they can just go into a prevent and let Washington take the ball down the field. to welcome everybody here to Berkeley, California Memorial Stadium, along with John Spagnuolo and Roger Twibell. California leads Washington 23-17, 158 left to go, second down and three for the Huskies. Theron Hill is not able to come up with the reception inside the 30-yard line. And just a few moments ago, after the touchdown pass from Heward to McCarthy to get him within six, this was the onside kick. Watch number 12, Scott Greenlaw. He's down on the ground, just making a block. The ball squirts around. He gets up and gets his hands on the football. And Washington now in a position to win this football game after they have been left for dead for just about the entire football game. The Cal led 20 to three at halftime. And Cal's defense has dominated this game, forcing six Washington turnovers, third down and three. And a great job by the California defense stopping Napoleon Kaufman, Jared Willard, the junior from Newport Beach, California. And the timeout called by the Huskies as on fourth down and three with 147 left to go in this game and trailing by six, a decision will be made. Fourth down, and let's call it four. And this is an easy decision, John <laughs> Spagnola to make because this is the ball game. That's right. They have to go for it. They converted a fourth down play earlier uh, to get to within six points on the previous drive. And now we're, they're in a position where they have no choice but to go for it again on fourth down. So Jim Lambright calls timeout. Scott Greenlaw would be one of the heroes if Washington's able to pull this game out here in the waning moments against California. California at Washington. The Huskies 3-1, but not able to go to the Rose Bowl this year or next year. California 5-0, looking to go to 6-0 for the first time since 1950. down at four at the 42-yard line. Kralik and McCarthy come to the near side. Hewer on fourth down and four. Looking, and he's got his man. The reception made over on the near side by Joe Kralik. And he's able to get out of bounds. So on two fourth down situations in the final minutes, Washington has come up big. 
as Kralik makes the catch at the 32-yard line, and with 1.39 left to go, the Huskies still alive, and they have one timeout remaining. You can see Damon Ewart, I mean, he's turned the ball over on interceptions four times today, but at crunch time, he's able to deliver a beautiful throw pass. Back to the near side, Bruner makes the catch, and he is shoved out of bounds. So Heward, who was just struggling all day, throwing interception after interception, when it finally came down to that prevent time, John, and Cal eased off on some of the pressure and got into that prevent sort of defense, he's been picking them apart. No question, Heward has been bothered today by the pressure of the Cal defense. Now he's been able to execute it. It's interesting, and three times today we've said this is it for Washington. The onside kick and two fourth down conversions, and they've been able to plot along and keep things going. They've got a good history. They've won 12 straight against California, so they're confident in that regard. Second and five from the 27. Heward's got McCarthy. Very close to the first down at the 22-yard line. Player down for the University of California, Artis Houston. What an interesting turn of events, though, and, and Cal is victimized one week later by a fantastic comeback by the opponent Absolutely. after last week coming back, and it's for the greatest turnaround in the history of Pac-10, down by 30 points against Oregon, and the exact same thing is happening to them today. First and 10, 21-yard line, Heward's got a man wide open on the far side and run out of bounds inside the 10, Matt Jones, the fullback from Portland, Oregon. Willard finally runs him out, but nobody was nearing as Jones makes his first pass reception of the year. Well, Jones is a co-captain, and it certainly could have come at a better time for the Washington offense. He was left wide open. That was a breakdown in coverage by the California defense. So the Golden Bears have got to tighten it up, or they are just going to be devastated if Washington's able to get the ball in the end zone. Cal has missed two field goals today. That's Artie Gigantino. He's the defensive coordinator. And I'm sure he can't believe what's unfolding in front of his eyes. First and goal from the seven-yard line. Kaufman trying to get outside. He is pulled down by Dante DePaula. DePaula making his first start in his career here at Cal, just a sophomore. And that is just a great open field tackle by DePaula. Kaufman has all the moves in the world. He has 4-3 speed. And he would have been in the eighth zone if DePaula didn't make the tackle. 23-17 as Washington has used their final timeout. And boy, I'll tell you what, if Keith Gilbertson didn't have acid indigestion last week, <laughs> he's going to have it this week. Well, you know, now that we go back and look at some of the things Cal was trying to do offensively, if you raise the points of why are they doing this, why are they sort of sitting on it a little bit? I mean, not to say you're clairvoyant, Roger, but I'd say you made a pretty good point looking back on it that you know, they did sort of sit on the ball a little bit because really Washington hadn't done anything for them to think, hey, Washington was going to move the ball offensively against them. Cal is without their top running back, Lindsey Chapman. All right? They're a big play offense. Dave Barr has done a terrific job. Outstanding quarterback. They got down on several situations where they really could have put Washington away, and they got conservative. And what happened? They ended up missing a field goal. Consequently, California is in a situation now with Washington being too good a football team. They've been in these situations too often. They've won too many championships to expect them to fold up and go away. Second and seven, California leads Washington, 23-17, 108 left to go. Hewitt is hit as he throws, the catch is made, touchdown, Washington, Mark Bruner. That play has been working in the second half as Washington's been able to move the football effectively in the big tight end. He may be an All-American tight end this year. Mark Bruner makes the reception and gets his feet into the end zone. Heward with his second touchdown pass in the closing minutes. And Travis Hansen, who's 13 of 13 this year, 110 out of 114 in his career, to give the Huskies their first lead of the game. And it's good.
Brunner's third touchdown reception of the year. And Heward. Tell you what an incredible turn of events. Watch your tight end on the left side. That's number 85, Mark Bruner. He slips into the flat. Coverage is on him. There's a blitz, which means there's single coverage. And he's able to catch the football. Uh, a fabulous look, look catch at, as DePaul is draped all over him. You see the catch. DePaul actually got a piece of it there. And he has the strength to get into the end zone. Now, I'll tell you what. People are talking about the drive with two minutes and 22 seconds left last week against Oregon. Cal here with a minute and four left has got to have the drive part two. No timeouts remaining for California. Heward in the first three quarters, 10 of 20, four interceptions, 108 yards. This quarter, 11 of 13, two touchdowns, 119 yards. And I'll tell you what else, Washington has 216 yards in the second half today, and Cal only has 75. This game has completely turned around at halftime. Jason Crabb to kick it off. Semyon and Benjamin back deep. 104 left to go. Benjamin. Up the middle. Across the 30 to the 31. And Barr will have less than a minute to get it done. On the Josh back, no, I'm Roger Twyble. It's another down to the wire for the Bears of California. First and 10. 31 yard line. Barr will go to the far side and quickly out of bounds. The reception made by Damian Simeon. And let's just see how much a flair for the drama Dave Barr has. Well, he knows how to execute a two minute offense. There's no question about that. The question is, he has no timeouts left, so can he execute the two minute offense today as Cal has squandered all of their timeouts? Second and four. The catch is made, Benjamin across the 45 to the 46-yard line, and that'll stop the clock on the first down. Great job by Niall Benjamin. Staying with the football, that's right. And keep in mind that although they don't have timeouts, Cal is able to, when they get a first down, stop the clock, they can get a play called, you see the play is already called, and as soon as the referees blow the whistle, they can get it to the next play. And all they need to do is get in field goal range for Bryant as the pass comes to the near side and the catch made by Away's a K. That stops the clock with 40 seconds left to go. So these players are no strangers to the pressure this type of execution warrants at this time of the football game. But uh, the question is raised again. Should Washington stay in the prevent or should they pressure? They've had a lot of success in the second half pressuring the Cal offense. Remember, Doug Bryan has made a 52-yarder today. On second and three, Barr staying in as long as he can. Too long, sacked by Andy Mason. And the clock continues to run. Andy Mason on Todd Stuzzi, and that was a coverage sack. That was not a pass protection breakdown sack. Third down and 10. Barr. The catch is made over on the far side, but the receiver, Semyon, not able to get out of bounds. The clock continues to run. Down to 10. Will Cal run out of miracles this week? they just got to get the snap. Wait, penalty marker is down. A penalty marker is down. Penalty marker is down. They're waving the Washington players back off the field. There's an illegal snap by the offense. There's two seconds left on the clock. Oh, nice move, huh? Two seconds left on the clock. Illegal snap. That's one way to get the clocks. It is. Clock. I don't know if they can get away with it, though, with a penalty by the offense late in the game like that. Are you going to try a field goal? Well, there's not much reason to punt, is there? Uh, he might drop kick it. I don't the, and Stuzzi is limping off uh, the yeah. field. 75 Todd Stuzzi is limping off the field. In 91 when Cal was 5-0 trying to get to 6-0, it was Washington which stopped it. This year, Cal 5-0 trying to get to 6-0. Looked like they had things in control. But Washington has come back to haunt them. 68-yard field goal attempt. 
He hit his career high earlier today of 52. The game's over. The game is over. Snap the ball yeah. in time. They didn't snap the ball in time. And what a comeback by the Washington Huskies. The Cal players are on the field dumbfounded. And Gilbertson, who coached many of these Husky players, is giving his congratulations, but he has got to be heart sick.